All right, good afternoon. This is another segment in the video history of uh, running in Memphis. And today I've got some really interesting guys here who I used to like to watch race uh, from way back behind them. Uh, Tommy Leach on the far right, John Mahundro, both of whom are legends in Memphis running. <laughs> and. Uh, and really are. Your names have been mentioned by other people uh, in some of these segments. So I, I wanted to get you all on so they can see who these people were. Uh, but we'll start with Tommy, and if you'll tell us, and then we'll move over to Mo. And uh, when you started running, where? Um, and then we'll go on into the University of Memphis uh, or Memphis State, the years. Have okay. at Okay. All right. Uh, well, I started running probably in the seventh grade in uh, junior high. Started off as a hurdler, and, a, and uh, I remember one of the first early races we had, uh, I, I did the hurdles, and then all the eight, bit older eighth grade guys decided they didn't want to run a half mile, and that was the longest race they had, or whatever. Where were you? In Poplar Bluff, Missouri, that's where I grew up. Grew up. Well, we did have some in that race, but for some reason they put me, I never had trained for it, they put me in there. And I think I finished third from last in that race, but I beat the other two guys from my hometown. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so from then on, I started, uh, you know, being a half miler, miler, and uh, running cross country in high school. And uh, I don't know, I, I really didn't do very good. I wasn't the best till like, I think when I was in the ninth grade. And, uh, then I was the best runner in our high school, best distance runner. You know, I was the number one cross country man and I could beat all the high school. They didn't let me run high school track then. And uh, what was your mile time back then, you remember? In that that time that mm -hmm. you can guess like me. four fifty, something like that. You know, I remember I ran four thirty four my uh, sophomore year oh yeah that was one of the few times that it, you know the conference meet the biggest meet I was going to run in or whatever I, I did and uh, well, from then on running was always easy for me I don't know what it was was it emo I mean it just it was just easy to go run you know I did I did a lot of stupid things I can remember running in the winter time be snow on the ground and all this so you know the only thing I knew was to put on boots <laughs> <laughs> put plastic bags in my so my feet wouldn't get wet I thought you know and God I, you know it took me about one time and I learned better than that but that was hard go out and run, <laughs> run wearing those you know really work boots you know whatever <laughs> honey boots, boots whatever they were right. yeah it's a good way to build that strength and running running <laughs> like that and uh you were recruited to the university? Yeah, recruited. Larry Wright was the coach. Right. Mo knows him well. That was quite an experience. Uh, came in 69. I guess I came on a Saturday, and I probably that Saturday afternoon we had a time trial out at Alderman Park. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know, was it two laps around? I think so. Do you remember? It was a long time ago. That was the fastest six miles I've run in my life. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were way ahead of me. I know that. That was hard, but that's how it was. We, uh, that guy believed, you know, pushing the pain barrier and and Mo and I me, mean, we were racing every practice. I guess every every everybody was racing. You know, there wasn't any sometimes two a days, you know, with him. It wasn't any easy days or anything, you know. He just ran, pushed that pain barrier, and uh, I guess some people could do that. For me, it just broke me down, you know. Yeah, most but, of uh, us would be broken down. Yeah. How about you, John? Uh, Larry Wright. No, Larry when, when did you start? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, let's see. I guess when I was a kid, running around the playground. I remember a bully chasing me <laughs> when I was about 10, I Motivation. Guess. <laughs> yeah, I remember that tongue sticking out of his mouth. And he, <laughs> he, he was, he couldn't, he, he couldn't last. I, I lasted him. And a teacher, I had this fourth grade teacher that was really strict and she would keep everybody after school. And uh, I didn't want my parents to know about it. So when she let us go, 
uh, I'd run all the way home. It was probably about a mile and a half, maybe, maybe, and uh, where catch up with the others. Where, where were you brought up? Uh, southeast Memphis. Okay. Get well. Yeah. Around the old Kennedy Veterans yeah. Hospital. Yeah. And uh, whenever I know about running with boots on, whenever I was, uh, I got a paper out in high school, and I still hadn't started running yet. And but I'm wearing those boots, I think, made my legs strong, and uh, it helped me carrying those heavy papers, mm -hmm. and uh, it helped me like that. And uh, one day the PE instructor had us uh, run. Uh, a physical fitness thing where they say, I'm, see how many, let's see how many push-ups and sit-ups you can do. And they, okay, let's see what you can do in this. It was probably, it might have been 600 yards. And uh, I ran pretty good. And and so I went after that next following fall, I started running cross country. Who and, for? Uh, Overton. Overton High School. I saw you. Really? Mm -hmm. Do you remember at back Audubon then? Park? I think it was in Audubon Park, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. You ever meet in Audubon Park? You remember one? I remember. I'm, that was the first place I, I I used to go over there and run sometimes, and that's where I met Hayes. That's where I met Purple Hayes was over there. <laughs> if you know what he did? First thing he did, he let me wear his shoes. Wow. I was barefoot. Yeah. And, uh, that was what I remember. They wouldn't let you run. It's hazy now. It's been a, some years ago. But mm -hmm. I remember some some guy, I'd gone over with somebody who was going to run. And they said, well, they're not going to let that guy run. He ain't got any shoes. <laughs> but uh, I remember Sorry. you won the race barefoot. I think you went, I think you jumped in at some, I, I, that's my recollection. Uh -huh. This may be a folk tale that I've made up. <laughs> But in my memory bank, that's the, I remember seeing you barefooted out there and, and uh, watching those long strides of yours and thinking, that guy can run. <laughs> Even then, I was, of course, I was busy smoking. So yeah. Had no interest in running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Your> cigarettes. <laughs> oh, you know, those days. But uh, so you, what was your best mile time? Do you remember? High school? High school, uh, 418. Blistered it. Well, it, it, it felt pretty fast. Yeah. I felt like I was, I felt like I could move from 418 to 405 in one month, you know. And <laughs> I didn't realize that was an eternity. <laughs> and I never got there. Oh, you didn't? Uh, I thought you'd been like 405, 404. Oh, no. I remember when we were in uh, Houston. Tommy pointed out a boy from Kansas, and he said, that guy's done 404. Wow. Which one was that? That one, Ryan. Uh, Probably McElroy. It might have been McElroy. I don't really He was remember. running for him then. Yeah, he was running for him. The Corey was down there. He was he a was big running. meet. He was a big meet. You know, had, that's yeah. when, the, you uh -huh. know, back then, the AAU and, and uh, I guess was it track and field or was it NCAA? One they were fighting over who's going to control probably. who was going to control mm -hmm. amateur uh, running, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, so they came up with some kind of meet and kind of in the middle that uh, was trying to kind of be a, a uh, or the middle ground. I can't what's the word a compromise of the two. Mm -hmm. And that was fun. That was fun. They had a great big track inside the Astrodome. Oh yeah, uh, in the orchard. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like being outdoors. It was yeah, so it was a 300 yeah. meters or something track. It's huge. Wow. Banked, too. Y'all ever run the indoor track here in Oh, yeah. Memphis? We were the first ones. Remember that model? That was a great track. I loved it that was. track. Did you really? Yeah. Was it 13 laps? I think it was to a mile. They had it set up in an old hangar. It was a concrete floor. At the airport. That was nice. Oh, yeah. At the airport. Yeah. Had it at the airport. We had it, we trained on it for most of our college time, I guess. And then it wound really? up going, giving it to the, yeah, they used to have a meet in the, uh, at the Liberty Bowl. Yes. And they had, that's what they bought it for, got it to have that indoor track meet at the Liberty Bowl. 
But they, they had a track, an indoor track over at the uh, fairgrounds too. Same one. Oh, it was that wooden. Wooden, well, no, yeah, yeah. A wooden track. It put down on top of where the rodeos were held. Yeah, that's Dirt right. Underneath it. I remember. It, it was around town for quite a few years, but where's then they let the high school start running on it, and it just got all beat up. Right. I remember watching some meet over there and people running on it. You could see spurts of dirt coming up in the cracks. <laughs> Boy, it was cold in that hangar. Oh. That's what I remember. <laughs> I guess there wasn't any heat to be <laughs> yeah. we started. Um, you remember Raymond Peters? Yeah. A quarter miler. He beat Tennessee's best quarter miler. He was good. Three years in a row in really? that meet at Liberty Bowl. Yeah. We've had some fantastic athletes come through Memphis that nobody ever knew about. Well, yeah, back then, the, old sprinters. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The, he's talking about sprinters. We had a guy who ran and, and won the NCAA in the, the relay, the 440 relay. And he pulled, a, pulled his hamstring when he was a sophomore. And uh, he uh, uh, had to, it took a year off to start off. That's how bad it was. Mm -hmm. And he redshirted a year and he came back and he ran for three years. The only way he could run anything, race, workout, was a big bandage on his leg from here to here. Anytime you saw him running, he had that thing on. Who was he? Lynn, Ed Hammonds, wasn't it? Oh, Lynn Fox. Oh, you're talking about Lynn? <coughs> yeah. Okay, but he, he was on the relay, okay. Uh -huh. I thought you, you said it. I think Ed Hammonds yeah, won, the, more than won one. the 100 and then was on that relay. That's too. right. That's right. He was the, he reminded me of uh, Jesse Owens. Uh -huh. He was just smooth and there was, didn't look like there was any effort involved at all. And boy, he was good. They were, those guys were good. All. Y'all went to the University of Memphis in the early 70s? Yeah, I got there in 69. 69. So it was integrated already. Mm -hmm. You know, we will, we'll have another segment where we'll have, uh, hopefully we'll have uh, Margaret uh, Wilburn, whose husband, Jesse Wilburn, was coach at Melrose. Uh -huh. And she was on the Tiger Bell team wow. with Wilma Rudolph and went to the Olympics. Okay. And her goddaughter Ooh. is Rochelle Stevens, who oh, went to the Olympics. Wow. And I'm hoping that Tukey will come and, and be part of that. And Cody's going to involve himself in that one, too, since he's been involved in civil rights since the early 60s. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so we were, we were talking at one point with some people, and they were like, you know, before, before we were in integration, we would have track meets at uh, Hodges Field in Memphis in those days over on Poplar Avenue. And uh, after the meet was over, the uh, African American schools would come over, and we would have unofficial dual meet, and never could beat them in any distance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was incredible to think that all those guys had come through, and some wonderful athletes that went on to college careers and professional careers. And, and Memphis never knew anything about them. Uh -huh. It's hard to believe it, it, it was like that then, you know. Mm -hmm. When I was probably uh, maybe like the 10th grade in high school. For some reason, nobody wanted to coach cross country, you know. I had, I had four different coaches every time. One time, my father threatened to move to another town because they didn't have a coach and weren't gonna have cross country. They found somebody, you know. So we made it, but uh, I remember I had a, a, there was a black man that they got to coach, and we'd only been integrated for very shortly, you know, and uh, he was there for maybe a week or two, and then he came over and told me, he said, Tom, I, I can't coach anymore. And I said, well, what's going on? He said, well, they don't want me out here with you. They're gonna get somebody else for you and uh, because I'm black, that's what he said. And he was a good guy. I remember him, he used to be the umpire at the baseball games. I played baseball in the summer and all that, and really liked that man a lot, you know, whether he was coaching or not. And, that always stuck with me, you know. I didn't quite understand that, you know. What, what's the harm? What's going on there? Yeah. You know? But we uh, and you too. 
actually, we, there was so much going on when we were in school between the, the Vietnam War and the protest and all that, and civil rights was going on and all that, and all the drugs and everything going on. It was a an era to grow up and live through that, uh, you know, I know there's probably been harder times, but it was pretty unique the way that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that all came together. Well, were, your, were you, either one of y'all, uh, all conference or? <coughs> Mo won conference a few times. In the mile? Uh, yeah, I was thinking about the time you're talking about uh, 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 that coach he's talking about, that black coach. And I remember one time whenever I, we, were, we were up in Missouri at SEMO, Southeast Missouri, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I remember that meet. Mm -hmm. And it was it was raining, and the track yeah. was flooded, old center track. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and I was in the mile, and I was uh, I was in third place when they fired the gun, and I heard somebody holler, man. It was Maurice Knight. He's, he's saying, you know, come on, man, you know, come on. <laughs> and so I won that race, man. And if it wouldn't been for Morris, I, I no way I could have come from that far back. And it was, it was crazy. He That's had a something. distinctive voice, didn't he? He did, he yeah. Little, 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 little. <laughs> he called me up one time after, a, a, you know, to congratulate me after a race. And it's like, it was, it had been years since I had talked to him, but I knew exactly who it was when he, you know. He could play basketball. Yeah, he oh, was yeah. an athlete. Yeah. He, was, he was really good. There are people who are athletes. Yeah. You know, he they can do, do anything. <coughs> me, I could do one thing. Yeah. <laughs> Not very well, but. <laughs> yeah, that's what you know, we were talking about earlier. That's, if it wasn't for running track, I really don't know where I'd been because I didn't grow up, you know. I literally was born on the wrong side of the railroad tracks, you know, in Papa Blood, Missouri, and uh, I didn't have anything. We didn't have anything, you know, and uh, I, I'm, you know, I'd be, I'm, I'd be surprised if I was even alive today if I didn't have running the, the things that that brought me in the direction it took me in, you know. After the running, it wasn't, you know, it's fun to win a race now and then, but I just mean to, you know, that, because well, highs and lows of it, you know, you, it, it teaches you hard work. <coughs> it, hard work oh, pays yeah. off. You can have talent, but, what, but you also, talent carry you everywhere just have to work hard. I remember watching you work hard, and I know you worked hard. I never really saw you working out as much as I would see him at the track. But it, it, it influenced a lot of us who came to running later, that you know, if you just bear down and put the what the guy calls the trials of miles and the miles of trials in, that you can see some comeback coming to you. And that carries over into personal life too, and, and you begin to, realize that you're going to have to take responsibility for you for how you train and how you race and how you live your life if if you uh, let it down you <laughs> you have some backsliding on that, which we all happen to know about <laughs> you're right it's, it uh, it probably took me and mo both a while to really learn that in college we probably tried to slide all we could you know <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny for me anyway once I was through with all that I probably worked harder on my own you know or you know or at least I I was more motivated I'll say this I didn't dread practice so much I look forward when I had a hard run you know schedule to, after college I look forward to that really what distance was your favorite and which one did you do run best you think that's kind of mediocre in, in, in all of them, I think. I was a half mile in college, you know. I, I sure ran a lot more bad races than I ran good ones. And and then I won a couple of marathons, you know, yeah. for some reason, if they weren't, you know, I don't know, there's something about the marathon that, you know, I didn't run great times or run, you know. You were in the 220s, right? Yeah. Which but ones did you win? I won, uh, Mississippi Marathon in 1980, and then I won the Memphis Marathon in 1984 and 1988. And you 
place down in Huntsville. Oh, I was way back in Huntsville. Lord. I was in great shape that time too, but I, I don't know. Sometimes I think I really overtrained a lot and didn't rest enough because I got to where I'd be doing uh, 26 miles on Thanksgiving. Usually I ran the first first week, like in first Sunday in December was uh, Memphis mm -hmm. and it happened to be the Mississippi Marathon too. And so Thanksgiving I'd go out and run tw you know, seven or eight days, whatever it was, 26 miles that day, you know six minute pace or better you know that wasn't killing me but uh but, you know now that i get older i see you know, i think <laughs> maybe i could have done things a little different yeah, the technology you know? now <laughs> teaches you these things too for you what uh what distance was your favorite oh let's see uh uh 10ks i guess you want a bunch of them in town <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, in town. That's that's key words there. <laughs> well, you ran some super times out of town, too, but unfortunately, you know, there, there were other people running just a hair better. But uh, no one in Memphis could touch you. Well, thank you, Bill. <laughs> I don't think it had nothing to do with I rem it. I, I remember... Uh, I don't think I was here for the old old call race, but Mo went up to St. Louis and ran, and they used to have a Pepsi Challenge, which was the best, mm -hmm. best distance 10, runners around yeah. the country were running this thing. And I don't know how you placed up there, really, but then he drives from St. Louis, comes down here, and then wins the old call three-miler that afternoon. I do know, remember and, that. Uh, that's pretty strong. That's pretty <laughs> you, you ran under 30 minutes, didn't you? Uh, one time. Yeah. Well, yeah. it only takes once, yeah. <laughs> from what I understand. <laughs> in Memphis, it probably puts you number one. Yeah. And I don't think anyone else in Memphis, from Memphis, or has ever gone under 30 minutes. I understand they're running 10Ks again. They stopped doing that, you know, for a while. <sighs> there, are f there are a few, but, you know, Running has evolved into a social uh, aspect. We talk about it a lot, that, uh, and we talk down about these people who are running. And yet, we also understand that it, it, it's inviting, involves more people who are getting in shape to do it. 5Ks seem to be the, the majority of races these days because almost anybody can run three miles after they run for a couple of months. It doesn't matter how fast, they don't care how fast it is. They, they have a good party after it's over and they meet a lot of people and they feel better about themselves. So that, that all works into it. And back in the day, you know, you put on your racing flats, and you were racing. There was no socializing. You might speak to somebody before the race, but it was bear down and run. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wanted to catch that guy up there. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Times in, in these local races are much slower than they were back when we were running. You know, I just don't, I don't understand. You know, it doesn't make sense to me because you still see, uh, you know, I guess uh, uh, nationally we're probably better, got better distance runners now than we ever have. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, local races all over the country. It's mm -hmm. not just Memphis. No, it's not just I Memphis. I keep up with Little Rock races and... 18 minutes win so many races, it's unbelievable, you know, 16, yeah, 16, mm -hmm. I think 16 minutes is going to the Olympics or something yeah. sometimes, you know, it's hard to believe. You there, know? People are, we, there are races in Memphis that are won by people running 19 minutes, Yeah, a 5K, and you're just, I mean, overall. I remember <clears throat> training for a marathon one time, I ran, I think I ran 17 miles before the race, then I ran like a 1730. 5K won the race, you know, and then ran, you know, warm down at three or four miles after that. It's you know, amazing. Yeah. And, uh, and it was astounded us, you know, that, that that you ran so easily in the 10Ks. I remember you would often come back at, after a race was over and, and you know, clap for people and running the, like me, the <laughs> yeah. struggling to get to the 36 minute mark, you know, and did you ever run over the race at uh, President's Island? Mm -hmm. About gagged to death over there. <coughs> I don't know what, what who, New Corps or somebody over there was poisoning the atmosphere when we ran out there. There's no telling. 
I remember a, a, a race that we started over there. We started up at the old uh, Marine Hospital, and we're going to yeah. wind down. Uh, it, it's uh, DeSoto Park, I think they call it. Yeah, okay. It's the ornamental, ornamental, mental, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we, we're going to wind down and go out on President's Isle. It's going to be a 25K and come back up, and Bud forgot to get the... Uh, race permit so the cops are waiting on us <laughs> as we came down the hill <laughs> well nope nope, nope. <laughs> about 150 people going oh now what <laughs> so after they left people kind of went off and spits and dribbles and finished you know running there was no race to it but uh, Bud had a race over there on Super Bowl Sunday and yeah and you know I imagine the wind coming off that river oh, and, and uh, he uh, ever there was about 20 I guess people that showed up to run it it was a uh, let's see 15k mm -hmm. and man I tell you it was both of my legs were cramped and <laughs> there was a guy from Arkansas he was right behind me pushing me the whole way and Oh man, I'll never forget that day. Is that Gudgel? Yeah, Jim you know, Gudgel. Yeah, that's pretty good, yeah. Bill. Th well, thanks. Because <laughs> this was this was probably seventy-eight, yeah, something 78, like that. Yeah, yeah. I was ran against 40? him a few times. Had a, had a tattoo on his mm -hmm. leg. I yeah. thought that was really radical. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one, yeah. just one tattoo. One that tat. Big. He came up here and invited us all to come down to the turkey truck. It was uh, down in Greenville, mm -hmm. over in uh, uh, over in the Arkansas side, and you ran. You started in the flat, and you went up over uh, what's that? Arc, uh, arc, that geological formation, uh, Crow's Crow Ridge. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't know that. <laughs> so we started off in the flat. We're all like, "It's gonna be a good race." <laughs> Got to that thing, <laughs> I, I remember people yelling at him <laughs> after the race was over. You didn't talk about that damned hill. <laughs> 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 Poor Gudgel. Yeah, what, what was that? A, a chicken on the back of his leg, or I don't know. Ankle or something. I can't remember now what the tat was. One tat. I've always uh, thought it strange that you know, if you live in a flat area, you'd you know want to run a race in the hills. I couldn't stand training in the hills or whatever, but same thing, I live in Greenville, Mississippi, and it's the flat delta can be, but you got the levee, and every time they have a race, they want to run up that damn well, levee, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I used to like for them to come down from Nashville, you know, for these flatland races down here and just wax us yeah. back in the age group runners because they were training on hills, and we, you have to go find a hill in Memphis to train on. Uh -huh. Well I, well, I don't know. Yeah. I'm thinking about out east. It's pretty. Yeah, I wasn't living out compared <laughs> compared to to there. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah, yeah. It's just different different sizes of hills. Yeah. Uh, but 10K. Somebody was telling me not long ago they thought 10K was going to make a real comeback mm -hmm. because a half marathon uh, was beginning to lose its uh, numbers. All over the country, and it, the 10K, it, it's still over the 5K distance, but it's not the marathon distance. So they, they thought the popularity was going to come back, but uh, it, it requires a whole lot more infrastructure to put it on. So these organizations, these charities, and other groups who want to put on a race, 5K, make it real simple and quick and easy and over. And the companies that put them on now, you got probably three companies, maybe four in town. That you go to them, and including the Memphis Runners Track Club, and tell them you want to put on a 5K, they'll find a date for you to put it on. Because they make money doing it. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's something else it used to cost. I mean, to run a marathon, it seems like it might have been 35 or 40 yeah. bucks, and now it's hundreds of dollars or yeah. whatever. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. I can't imagine. Yeah, I, that little thing they have, you know, they have a marathon in Greenville. It's coming up next month. You know, it starts in Lake Village, and the whole attraction is to run across the the bridge, the Mississippi River Bridge. You know, and uh, and it costs like 150 bucks to mm -hmm. run that thing. You know, yeah. but then you see all the. 
people that are working there with all the timing stuff and, and they go out the day before or whatever and put flags up at every mm -hmm. mile for them and then do all, you know, there's a lot of work involved. It sure is. is. Uh -huh. But the company that puts them on makes money. You know, back in the day, Bud didn't make any money putting on a race. He was lucky if he didn't lose any money. <laughs> I remember Bud starting a race, jumping in his car, getting to the finish line before we got there, and, and getting the runners as they came across. Mm -hmm. I was uh, at Overland Park a couple of times. They would, you know, I, I wasn't fast enough to really be an elite runner, so they'd go, anybody here? Butler, can you, can you run over to the one mile mark and call the split and then come back to the finish line? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Get to the finish line going, <laughs> it's still Saturday. <laughs> I remember Glenn Hayes, our old track coach, he would just about run a meet off by himself, a college dual meet. He, and I, and uh, he just, he didn't uh, really want to put anybody out, to ask him help him, and he, he'd do it. He. That guy, you know, all that, every time we dressed over there, it was always clean gear. Mm -hmm. And you know who was washing that was stuff that him, for us? Yeah. Most of the time. Yeah, we had some kind of, he seemed like we had a trainer usually, but he, you know, you're right, he didn't do anything. <laughs> uh, we used to go over there, that, we were the first ones to run on that track at the, the new Oh new yeah. Place, you know, that was, Oh, the Probably South about, Campus? Uh -huh. They call we it. built that, all that complex, and that was great because we'd go in between seasons, we could go out on our easy long runs and screw around in the old Kennedy complex the whole time, finding all this old I, medical stuff. I'd forgotten interesting, about remember? That. All these old posters and, yeah. and uh, uh, orthopedic stuff they had in there. Back when it was the hospital. Yeah. yeah. It was really interesting. On Shotwell. Yeah. Getwell and Shotwell, yeah. Yeah, it was the name of Getwell one and Getwell. It was Shotwell until Eleanor Roosevelt came to visit patients. And when her, I guess her husband, I guess he was still president, or maybe he died and she was coming through anyway, and they, they thought that was most inappropriate to have a Shotwell street right by the Kennedy complex, so they, they changed it to Getwell. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's neat. <laughs> Good old Memphis. If you don't like today, uh, we'll change it. <laughs> <laughs> Before that, we ran between the dorm and the old basketball place. Remember that? Right outside our dorm, there was a track. Oh, yeah. You know, and that was the old, that's the first year, maybe two years we ran there when I was there. I'm the old, sure. old track. Yeah. Yeah, we could, you could, the, the, kids who lived in the dorm could just look out the windows and watch track meets if they wanted. <laughs> I got busted there riding my motorcycle on the track one night. And <laughs> we won't go there. That was the most, you're gonna, we'll cut that. Eh? Although I will, uh, I, I hope it doesn't embarrass you, and if it does, that uh, you, you'll get over it. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Or we'll outlive it. Um, but I remember there's a great picture of you being escorted yeah. into a uh, Memphis, Memphis's finest, one of their cars. <laughs> but you're very happy, extremely happy <laughs> that you're involved with them. Uh, and that's all the story I'll tell you them. You want to tell them the rest of it? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Uh, it's, it's been circulated in Memphis, that story has, but only, only because people think well of you and, and, and it, it adds the flavor. Yeah, it's hard to believe somebody could be so good and, and, and be so crazy, too, sometimes. You know? <laughs> I roomed with him for, I guess, two and a half years, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. It would have been the whole time that I got married and my... Uh, that was the end of that. Well, he tried to get in with us for a while, but we decided <laughs> that wasn't going to work out. No. <laughs> I wondered, but, uh, did, did you ever keep track of how many races you won oh. after college? I'll, I'll say after college. Oh. I, I had a log. Coach Hayes told me, you need to start keeping a log. Yeah, he told right. me that it was set in Memphis State to do that. I didn't and do it then. I didn't either. <laughs> I did later, yeah. Yeah, I, I kept up with it some, and and I'm sure you did, man. The miles. This guy was a mile king, man. He I, and Calvin. <laughs> Tookie, 
Took, that's what we called him. Took you know, him, yeah. Took him. I don't know where the nickname came from, but. I don't either. I don't I'd see him up. running on in town. Uh, he could always tell it was him, you know, a little guy. Man, hey, I, I, Saturdays, he must have, I'd see him, I'd be going somewhere out east, and I'd come back, and he'd still be coming down Poplar, maybe, you know. He's still doing that. Really? That's if I great. go and run at Overland Park on Saturday morning, uh -huh. Dookie's finishing a workout. Now, I've had people say, I see this guy, he's real skinny, uh -huh. the black guy, he's got all these clothes on, and he looks like he can barely walk. <laughs> In the, in the gutters over there in Midtown, I said, well, that's because he's cooling down. Yeah. Well, can he run any faster than that? Well, uh -huh. You ever want to, like, face him? <laughs> I'll put you on the track with him. <laughs> yeah. And see him, watch him bury you after the first quarter. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's still doing his mile workouts over there. He beat me one time in a mile. Uh, he was kind of a late bloomer, you know. He was. Out, both of us would outrun him, and then I guess it was his senior year. He just got his mind right or something. Well, and it, what he run four hundred three, four hundred five, something. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Yeah, wow. he, he just dropped it way down. Well, I just I'm really proud of him. Really, you know, that's he's never <laughs> been injured. That's that's amazing. I told yeah. you know, we had him on in an interview, uh -huh. and he was talking to. Bud or somebody, and, and and we were like, "You've never had an injury?" No, no. I'm like, <laughs> I had one a week. <laughs> yeah. Of course, started a little late, and that you know, biomechanically, you start late, you're going to have injuries because we were trying to keep up with you guys in intensity and in numbers of miles we were running. <laughs> well, he must have been doing something right. Still is. Lightweight, light boned. Uh huh. He so looks like a runner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember he told me one time, he said, You got to make your easy runs easy. That's what he told us. Yeah. You know. That's good. He said, Glenn Hayes convinced him of that, that he'd run at Melrose. He'd, he'd gone to Tennessee State mm -hmm. on scholarship, but he didn't like it up there. He came back, and Glenn gave him a scholarship down here, and he said, The first thing he told me was, On your easy days, you're gonna run easy. There's no, there's no cheating. And he thinks that's what propelled him his senior year. He'd been a better runner. Hayes knew more about track, mm -hmm. and it, it's even the like the say Olympic Games. He didn't know who just won the race. He he knew the second and third place finishers in a lot of their times, too. That's how well he oh, studied it. That's, in, uh, that's insane. <laughs> I think he was a math major. In, in it reminds me of the guys who got baseball stats. <laughs> they always want to tell you, uh -huh. oh, he played in 78. Yeah, he was a 192 pitcher. You want to go, <laughs> Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> but, you know, Hayes, that was tracking it, tracking he field. He it. it's still, I think it's still his passion. I think he misses it. He'd go to Europe every year, you know, and go watch all the big meets over there and all this stuff. You and know. recruit. Yeah. And pick up yeah. recipes for his recipe. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't kidding me. <laughs> well, I tell you what, it was... I was talking about Larry Wright before, and it was like the difference in night and day. Wright had uh, written me a letter before my sophomore year saying if I didn't run like first day of practice, didn't run like a 156 half, half mile, then I was off the team, you know. And gosh, I was, you know, I wasn't running or doing anything, yeah. you know. I was summertime. Just, summertime. I'll tell you a funny story about him. We, uh, we were down in Starkville, and we were going to fix the race cross, cross country against uh, Mississippi State. And uh, we went in a restaurant to get something to eat just a few hours before the meet. And I was a freshman, and uh, I said, uh, I'll take a piece of pecan pie. <laughs> and everybody just started laughing. It was funny, it was. <laughs> and so uh, coach said, I told the waitress, don't bring him any pie. She didn't know what was going on, you know. <laughs> and so it was a good thing. 
<laughs> he did that because that's the only race I won that whole Oh, is that season. right? <laughs> All because he didn't eat pecan pie. <laughs> well, you couldn't have, remember, he, did he throw the toast back at that lady up in, in that was in Cape Girada, SEMO? Uh, we, went, I we were having a little snack before the afternoon meet. When we went in, we had, he wanted dry toast. Nobody uh -huh. got any butter on their toast. And we yeah. got all that, and he got, they put butter on. He got mad as hell, grabbed up all that stuff. I thought he threw it at her or something like that. You know? <laughs> well, uh, was that where that old flat track was? It, it yeah. was a high school track. Where you ever run indoors. indoors on a flat? It's a circle. No. It's just like this floor. No, no. And, and no banking, and no, you no. felt it on every turn. Oh, yeah. And it was a high school thing, you know. Mm -hmm. At least they had something. Yeah. And it was. Yeah. It was. Uh, but you plant that foot instead of having to. Oh man, you had spikes on, but. Uh, yeah, but. Phew, it was awful. Tennessee UT had a track like that. I never ran indoors. The first yeah. ones they they play basketball on there too, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Be, and oh man, you talking about just you were worn out just trying to, I don't, I don't know how we passed anybody. I don't remember doing that. I don't think I did. <laughs> well, if you're starting first, you don't yeah. have to pass anybody. Right? <laughs> Very simple, yeah. Yeah, that was the thing about indoor. If you uh, if you didn't get out and, and just start controlling that race early, forget it, man. You know, because, what, you got like 30 yards? Yeah, there like wasn't that? much straight to pass, you know. Wasn't much at all. Remember Tinker nice. ran, the, remember he, he ran, this guy ran a world record. On that old track you were talking about. Really? Well, that yes. was a 50 Gerald yard. Tinker. And 50 yard dash. The 300, he did that too. Oh, Two of them. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. I remember the 50. Oh, he ran yeah. like 50 yards and he ran like 5 1, oh, I think. Or five. It was pretty quick for just, you know. Okay. It's yeah. so short, you, they don't even build up to their top speed by right. the time they cross the finish. Yeah. And, and uh, another 10 yards to hit. Oh, man. Not yeah, there was usually some uh, mats there oh, yeah, for them to, to run be. into, or they open the doors down there. They open the doors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes they shut through. them. Yeah. I remember seeing a picture of O.J. Simpson laying, laying on the concrete where he had finished an indoor race and won the race, and the way they stopped him down there, they had a rope. Oh. And they hit that I rope that full speed. That, yeah. They was hoping to kind of catch him, you know. And, and yeah, kind of. It didn't work. Yeah, it's not he like was laying a, down there. Not like an aircraft carrier where they don't catch an airplane. <laughs> <Yeah. you know. laughs> kind of like that. Theory, a just, <laughs> you hope the rope gives a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Either that or hold it low. Uh -huh. <laughs> he did that in this old hangar. There should be a plaque up out there when he did the 300. 30. It was, I think it was 30 flat. At the airport? Yeah. I wonder if... What if that hangar's still there? Uh, when I worked out there, they tore down one. I don't remember if that was the one. Mm -hmm. There was three of them. And I don't know if that was the one uh, he did it in or what. But It was on FedEx property? Uh, back then, it was National Guard. Yeah. yeah, National Guard, which has moved into close to Mississippi now, I think. <coughs> yeah. Further south off Chihuahua uh -huh. someplace down there. Yeah. This Maybe guy yeah. played. He was he was he was a football player really, mm -hmm. and he was so good. He, a wide receiver, you know, but he gets in the pros. Well, uh, he he couldn't make it. So he couldn't catch the ball. He couldn't catch the oh. ball. So he so he became a defensive back. Oh, I didn't know that. And that's that's why he stayed. He was good enough to do that. He got a gold medal and won the Olympics too on the relays. <sighs> really? Mm -hmm. You Is heard he of him? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of him, yeah. but I know, is he still in Memphis? Anybody know? No, no. He went back to Coral Gables, I think. Okay. He was a good card player, too, wasn't he? Well, remember oh, that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I tell okay. you. That's another little story. That's yeah, another little story. <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody knows him. We could tell that one now. No, yeah, no, sure. No, I won't, no, I won't, won't do that. Well, won't you know, uh, Taryn Wright, I guess, still holds a world record in the 300? I think so, yeah. I think it was a little, but I think it was a 300. If he did, uh, Tinker, it must have been a 150 that Tinker did. 300, I guess so. Uh, it was and with outdoors for, uh, and I think mm -hmm. Terrence, uh world record, mm -hmm. and it will never be broken since they don't run the event ever again. <laughs> and so yeah. he's a Memphian with a world record. Yeah, I think I've still got a Memphis State record because they, they don't run the event anymore. What's that? 
uh, indoor half mile. Because, you know, it's all meters. That's I don't okay. know why they don't. Yeah. All meters. If I was a half miler and knew, I mean, they've had a lot of guys who run faster than me, but uh, <laughs> I'd get somebody to put one on them, you know, just because I guess my, my picture used to be up there in the, in the thing. Really? It's crazy, yeah. I'll have to go look for that one. Yeah. If yeah. they'll let me in over there. <laughs> I think I still owe that's a lot of money from my That's a great semester. time. 151.3, is that it? Yeah. Yeah, my old oh, yeah. Wow. My old remembers all that. Those good days, one. basically, those days in college and good, college. The good thing about <laughs> all that to me was the competition. You always had somebody that, were, that could beat you or you had, to, you had to just gut it out. It was always like that. No easy races. You know, that's what I... I've told Mo this before, but that's something I, he was the toughest runner I ever saw. I watched him run his guts out to beat somebody that on paper he had no chance and why, you know, me, I would have just, go on, I'll jog in or something like that, you know, and he would, I've watched him do it many times and beat some of them, you know, and, and lose, but he, he uh, gave his all, gave his all every time out there, it's amazing. Always well, I'm glad that. you're still watching. <laughs> <laughs> After you, I guess Patrick came along after you, Patrick Alexander, began to win some races. Oh, yeah. I'm much younger. Yeah. But I don't think there was anybody in between y'all uh -uh. that, that won anything, uh, other than maybe Cullen Hume, I think, from Memphis ran Liberty Bowl and won, you know, there was people like that who would show up and then disappear again. Uh -huh. um, and then I never did want to run Pat, race Patrick. I said, man, I'm glad I'm not racing. You were always hurt serious. by then. Yeah. He was always fighting injuries, you know, by right. that time. You know, he and never he, could train. He never approached your times. Um, but I think the injuries, like you say, accumulation of injuries just finally wear you out. You can't, just can't do Yeah, that. you got to be able to... <laughs> to put in months and months of, of hard training and whatnot to really run good, you know, and, and, and maybe years or whatever, but I mean, you know, it's, like I've got a son that's still trying to run and uh, he ran faster times than, than I did, you know, and, and 5K and 10K and all that uh, in college, but uh, he just can't stay healthy, you know. He's, he's got his mother's knees, I think, oh. yeah, you know. Yeah. But well, I think they wear out. I, mean, I really think, I don't think Calvin ever competed in as many post-college races as y'all did. Mm -hmm. I mean, when he showed up, he would, he would compete, but he didn't show up for the number of races y'all mm -hmm. did. He didn't do marathons. I think he did one marathon and hated it, if I remember right. Um, but I think, and now I think post you guys, that's what happened. People are coming along now in middle school. My son, fifth, 17 year old, started in sixth grade. Now, he didn't have much coaching then, and so he had to get to middle school before he got much coaching, and, and now in high school. So, but they, you know, it's the stress levels there, the miles are there now, and, and, um, and by the time you get to college, it, it, there won't be many people from Memphis. I don't think there'll be any in Memphis that'll be given a college scholarship at a major college for a distance. Uh, they just, I don't see the, that fire. There's some kids and a family up here in Henry County, Tennessee, the Winders. I think that's yeah, I know Lance. Yeah. yeah. I know him well. Yeah, his two sons. Train with him. Um, are just, they are the class in the West Tennessee district mm -hmm. and running. I mean, they'll mm -hmm. come down here and they'll win, they'll be running f 14, 28, 14, 30, and the next guy, the Memphis guys will be running 15, 30, 15, 40. It's a good time, mm -hmm. and that's an extremely good time for the winters, but that's just where the gaps are now. You know, I think I, I, we don't have a, part of it is an entitlement kids don't, you, know, you, you, you probably had a, you weren't born on the wrong side of the tracks. You were, you were going to a tough school. Mm -hmm. You grew up in tougher times. Mm -hmm. You threw papers. 
I don't know any kid in there that throws a paper. There ain't no paper to throw. There's no paper to throw. <laughs> I remember selling uh, cold drinks in the stands. Yeah, you used to tell college. me that. And, yeah, well, I, I, at the, when Memphis State basketball team, when they played in uh, the field house, mm -hmm. and me and my brothers would be in there, and, and, there, and walking up and down them, carrying a case of Cokes, going up and down the stands, and you'd always see these guys with letter jackets on, sitting down under the, under the basket, and the, the athletes, mm -hmm. and, I, and I said, man, I, that's where I want to be one day. <laughs> that's what I want to do. Well, you, you were in there one day, but Larry Wright had 25-pound weight vests on, so we were running up and down those stairs, <laughs> I never racing everybody about, else. I never thought about those selling Cokes when we were doing that. <laughs> you didn't, yeah. really. I, I didn't, you've told me that before, and I never put the two and two together, but that's what he used to do to us. But you know, that, that's the difference. Even in public school, kids, they, you know, mom drops them off. Mm -hmm. You don't ride a bike to school anymore. You can't. You can't walk to school. You don't live close enough. You know, all, it's just ongoing. So your workout is what the school gives you. The work, your workout there, your coach. Run on your own, okay, you know. But nobody has to work hard. You know, I mean, just, I think it's just a difference in the society. And uh, so we see a, a kid has to, as I say, has to have that fire that drives them into wanting to beat so-and-so. And once they beat him, they want to beat the next guy. And you just really have to, you know, you, know, you all know the, what, what it takes. And I sometimes don't, I, I just don't see it in kids these days. Um, I remember thinking about, you know, all the hard work when I would, uh, when I was really training for a marathon, I would uh, do three 20 milers a week. And it'd be hard 20 milers, you know. And, and it wouldn't necessarily be after the first month or so of that, you know, I might do three a week like that. And then I'd start adding uh, uh, like 12 800s and then like 227, something like that with a 220 jog, you know. And, but I'd still get 20 miles. I'd warm up and then warm down. But I, three days a week, I'd run 20. 20 miles, and Lance was running with me some when I was doing that, because I lived in, uh, uh, what was that town? Paris, Tennessee. Yeah. That's where I was living when I won the marathon the first time. Henry County. Yeah, and he was he was going to Murray State. Was he? Yeah, and he wasn't, he really, you know, he really improved as he got older. He was, he was a much better runner, I think, out of college, you know. He just kept improving, improving. He ran some pretty fast times. He's know? still running. Yeah. He's still competing, apparently, at his yeah. age level, and I think yeah. his wife's a runner, so he's got a yeah. family of runners. Yeah. His brother ran, I remember that. And, uh, he lived out in the, we'd go out in the, he lived out in the country, and we'd go out there and run in all those old roads and whatnot. And I think great he time. still does, and yeah. that's where they, and they run those gravel roads and those yeah. country roads, and it's hilly. Yeah. People were always like, Paris, Tennessee? I went, you haven't been up there, but if you've been up there, and it, it's a hilly place. It's, yeah. You know, you can get workouts up there. Anyway, that's my theory, and I'm sticking to it today. Um, Might be. I don't know. Yeah, things are different. Things are different. I look, you know, because we were always out there, you know, running until I got to probably about the well, when they really started throwing curveballs, and I couldn't hit a curveball, and you know, I wasn't playing baseball anymore, so I could <laughs> run because I was doing other stuff, and Mo was too. You know, we, you know, we were playing basketball or whatever on the weekends, or even a couple of years in school. You know, running wasn't sure wasn't full time, but you're always doing something. Playing the neighborhood and playing the YMCA Stay down out. the street, and but I never got a participation trophy. I mean, you know, they give those out. It's garbage. In grammar school and in middle school, you get a, you know, you, you, you play on the soccer team, you get a little, everybody gets a trophy. Well, somebody in one of these interviews said, only one person wins mm -hmm. any event. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Everybody else is a, a loser <laughs> for that event. <laughs> so, well, you know, maybe they're in second place. <laughs> Yeah, you have to push to win. You don't get a trophy just because you show what, up. That's why it was always fun to win. That's what Mo was saying a while ago—the competition yeah. and whatnot. It's just for me, is night and day. I would want to, you know, 
running with, at that time was kind of who I was and what I was. You know, that's where I got my best highs if I won and then the lowest lows when I lost. That's, that was your ID. Lows too. Yeah, you know. We all were known as, you know, I remember Bud coming up and before racing, he'd go, you running okay? <laughs> i go, yeah, you know, I'm running well. You wanna wear the singlet? <laughs> <laughs> it's singlet. Joiner <laughs> Joiner Sports. Yeah, go, I had one. After the race, if you'll give it back to me. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. You know, I had ups and downs, and <laughs> he was the first Adidas dealership. Yeah. In Memphis. Yeah, I remember that little store he had on off of Central someplace. New York. Is that what it was? New York, New York yeah. Street. Dead yeah. End Road. Yeah. Yeah. Just an oh, old yeah. house he had there. Old house. He had a, did architectural modeling in the back because he built architectural models yeah. for you know architects and buildings and stuff and then up front he had that chest of drawers with had shorts and singlets in it oh, and uh, right. boxes of shoes and you go in and go hey, hey bud have you got an eight and a half here so uh, look over there on the <laughs> exactly yeah. the SL80s you made the SL80s famous and uh, we all had to have them 80 for the uh, Olympics mm -hmm. 80 1980 I remember going in there on Fridays. Everybody would go up there Friday, just sit around like this and talk. Yeah. Kind of like an old country store and tell tales about where you ran at last week and what you did and how many miles you did, mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's the way they did it back then, you know? You, you probably remember a place like that. Well, that's, uh, when I started running, that's uh, where I heard these stories. That's why I wanted to get uh -huh. better. I mean, I was, Talk about fire. I was inflamed with wanting to do the best I could. I wanted to compete. I just waited a little too late. <laughs> <laughs> I could still compete at my age a little bit. Not. Running was a good thing for a lot of people. A lot of these guys, I remember, I was in my 20s, and they were in their 40s, like Jack Rocket, mm -hmm. and out of shape, way overweight, and it run. they started running, and Hey, it was a new lease on life. Absolutely. People changed their body uh -huh. uh, compositions and, and found, you know, in Jack's case, he was so intense as a radiologist that this was an outlet for him. Yeah. He could compete at something that, that hurt physically. And uh, I think it balanced his life real well. And, and a lot of us, mm -hmm. positive addiction type thing, you know. And, of course, we had to go through a few other steps. <laughs> I think in the uh, it was Runners Anonymous, I used to call it <laughs> the RIA program. <laughs> Hi, my name's Bill. Yeah, I've been a runner for 40 years. <laughs> I had a friend who used to say that's what his why he because he was addicted, obsessed, whatever it was, was running too, and that's what he, and his wife would always be on. And he spent three hours yeah. out there running. And he said, "Well, you know, it's better than being at the bar for you know all night or whatever." If you want, you know, stuck to be doing that, be. yeah. And if you know, if, if something happens to me, all you gotta do is look on the road. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Do you remember there weren't when we were in school? There would be guys, you know, that would they were out of school and they just want to come and train with us and run with us sometimes. And I never understood. Stay out there a couple of weeks, maybe. And then yeah, and then they'd be gone. They couldn't keep, you know, they couldn't do it. But why? I always wondered why in the world would they be? In, you know, why are you going to run? You're not in college or anything. What's the point? You know, it doesn't make sense. I did. I wondered that too. Guys that weren't that good, and and they uh, they couldn't keep up with you in workouts. They couldn't sure couldn't run the meets, and and they all of a sudden you notice they you didn't see them in a while, and then. It was yeah, just part of these, that's, you know, 70s, I guess, yeah. is when the running boom started or whatever, yeah. and these, everybody was starting to, to yeah. get there. Yeah. So I took about six years off after college. I didn't want to run. Yeah. I remember they had a 10-mile race. I was in, living in Greenville, Mississippi, and they had a 10-mile race down there, and somebody won it in like 70 minutes, you know, and I said, well, shit, I can do that, you know. I went and, you know, remember I trained about six weeks, and I ran a 36-minute 10K. And I, as soon as I was done running, I went and sat down like this. Well, I could hardly walk after <laughs> that. And I had an injury that it took me about two months to get over before <laughs> I could even run again. <laughs> no one to tell you what to do, do it uh, right. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was like running in those boots and that shit. There really wasn't. 
throw anybody around or no, but, uh, <laughs> and I remember, you know, of course the newspaper guys there and uh, he just thought 36 minutes was, my God, that's great. And I said, no, and he said, you know, there's, there, that's a good runner. That's just an easy run for him to go out and do or something like that. So that's really, you know, it's, but, but they just hadn't, you know, after a 70 minute 10 miler, they never oh, heard yeah. anything like that, you know. Uh, Those are heady days. I ran know. my first marathon in uh, about 50 miles a week, and I didn't decide to run it till a few weeks before, and I did a couple of 16 milers. I ran like 237, you know, and I said, God, this is going to be easy. Oh, yeah. So I bumped it up <laughs> and ran across the Pontchartrain Bridge in a few months and wanted to kill myself over that thing, and I ran like 230. Was Eight or not, no, two th I improved by about a minute after all this hard training I'd done, you know, and all this. <laughs> Wait, do you remember you the year? It's the first, 79, first year they ran across the That's, bridge. I was down there. You were? Yes. I had a shirt, I, I, that was my first marathon. I had a shirt that said, training for the Mardi Gras Marathon it's through the city streets. Yeah. And I, I loved New Orleans. I was like, that, my girlfriend in those days, I was like, mm -hmm. we could drive down there in my Volkswagen van, you know? Hey. Man, we're going to have a big time. Man, I'm going to run a marathon <laughs> through the city streets to get out of there. They go, no, it's a police strike. They're going to cancel it. And then they said, no, we're going to haul y'all all, all the way across the punch train bridge over to Slidell, and you're going to run back to yeah. New Orleans. Yeah. Like 24 miles across the bridge. The wind was behind us. 79. But it 80. was cold rain, and when we started, rain. and then it got hot and humid over the that sun water. came out like, uh, like, like the ark. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the sun was out, and birds were flying around, and it had it was so. Then I came back. And I told everybody it was a PR course. Wind mm -hmm. was up from the north, and the next year they had it back on the bridge on the cars. They did it for quite a few years after that. Yeah, huh. Rocket's grandmama made him a cape like contraption. <laughs> to catch that wind. Really? really? It worked? Oh, yeah. No. The wind was out of the south. Yeah. Oh no. It <laughs> he came you. back and he I thought that was the first time I'd ever met, met I, he I never he told me, me about that. Yeah, I hadn't heard about that. Oh, he's eating. We know they got to where they'd try and figure out which direction the wind was gonna blow and run it one way or the other. <laughs> figure out which way it was gonna blow. A woman almost beat me that time too. That was a until Joan Benoit beat me years later. That was the first time that ever happened. That was a fast course. Well, uh, yeah. let's talk about hitting the wall. Okay. Uh, that's, <laughs> what, uh, that's what I remember about it. Now, everybody's always asking me about hitting the wall, and what do you think about the wall? Well, I, <laughs> I, didn't, I hated hitting it, and I know that, but you'd always mm -hmm. hit it. Uh, it was it was so bad you didn't remember a lot about no, it. I bet. 22 miles into yeah. it, you'd be struggling. In Boston, was the only time I really ended up having to walk some at about 22 miles, 23 miles. You hit it, you hit it then, and if you yeah. if you're walking, I was walking. Stopped uh, to drink part of a beer a guy offered me at the side of the road, and Rocket passed me and said, "Come on, Butler." And I, so I kind of shuffled on down and. Got my quads all the way <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> moving down there, and he he still got me by a couple of minutes, but I uh, finished up. But yeah, it's, it's it's a real thing. Yeah, I hit it. I read 12 marathons, and I probably did that. I walked at least three, maybe more. I took off one time, and I never ran a marathon from, from the lead from the beginning. But I wanted to really try and you know try and run fast, and I took off and. Uh, I remember this policeman on a motorcycle at about, about 18, 20 miles. He says, oh, you got it, man. He said, they're, you know, five minutes behind, you know. <laughs> and then a couple of miles, he's looking back, and uh, he's <laughs> saying, they're getting closer. <laughs> you know, <like. laughs> I bet. And it wasn't uh, very long after that I started walking. And uh, I remember my wife Carol and, and Brad was there. I don't think my daughter was born then. Were they scared? I, no, no, I was just walking and I was hungry. Uh -huh. And all they had were these dang uh, peanut butter crackers. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I ate one of those and it felt like it just expanded in my whole <laughs> mouth. And I could <laughs> <laughs> And it was terrible. And I'd, I'd walk, I, fin I always finished. But, uh, 
Yeah, that's yeah. terrible. I mean, what? And, and it can just hit you like that. Yeah. It did with me, you know, just be, bam, and just. Yeah. You know, marathons were like you were saying; they're always hard to finish. Yeah. I never finished one uh, strong. I tried to run the first six miles fairly slow, and then tried to run twenty as hard as I could usually. But the last three or four miles, well, it was just a hell so struggle. Did you run? You talked you about the one, didn't you? Uh, I won one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I always tell tell people that to start talking about marathons. I said my roommate has got three. <laughs> and man, I said, you know, uh, yeah, that was it. That's just one. This guy from Toronto. What me and him were running together, and on the way I won it. The guy was uh, he had to he had to uh, go to the bathroom, and so. All's fair. <laughs> yeah, and, and so uh, yeah, I, and and I won by nine seconds. That's how he come back after that, and he, oh he would have passed me. He would pass me. He'd have won the race if he didn't have to do that and take make a pit stop. Was that Raposo? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Eddie Raposo. He he was good. Yeah, he was good. He came from the. Uh, he originally was born. I guess yeah, the same thing. Uh, he was born in the uh, Azores. And okay. He didn't huh. have any shoes till he was like six years old, and and he he was something. He's probably got the Azorian records, and I, I <laughs> bet he does. Probably so. I bet he does. He's but a nice I'm, guy. Uh, talking about hitting Quite. the wall, I was when I hit the wall, it was it was around twenty, and it was it was uh, it started clouding up. And then the, it's windy, and the, and then the sun come out, and it was getting darker and lighter and darker. I thought things were changing colors. <laughs> Just, I thought I was hallucinating. <laughs> 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 and, and there was only a way I won. This guy on a bicycle, he was ke keeping up with me. And he was telling me how much of a lead I had. And Raposo was coming, man. He was, he, you could hear him hitting those cattle bridges. Oh, had yeah. plywood down, oh, yeah. you know. Oh, out of plow, uh, shovel farms. You remember those? Yeah. Oh gosh. Mm -hmm. And he and I heard him the last one. I could hear him right there. He was right there. I couldn't do anything. No way I could turn around and look back. Cause you, I'd probably fell flat on my face if I, <laughs> if I tried to turn around. You know. And oh gosh, but that that was that was the wall, all right. And those that course was the most miserable. Maybe the second most miserable. Yeah. The first most miserable <laughs> one was uh, I thought in Jackson, Tennessee, with Andrew Jackson oh. up there. Because when I ran it up there, it was you got out from Union University there, and in those days, and the only thing you heard was <laughs> a couple of dogs barking in the distance back there. No you know, landmarks. No landmarks. Had come up to be a guy with a flashlight. You turn here. <laughs> Did you do the 24-hour run they had on the track over there? No, I watched it. Okay, that I'm was glad uh, you remember that. Jerry Vinoy brought all those yeah. people in here. Remember yeah. Vinoy? Mm -hmm. Had a do you have a store or just a just no. a running guru or whatever he, it's prone to be? He was just real curious about all that stuff, and he didn't like the way the runners club was just concentrating on standard events. Hmm. He was really into a oh, moonlight run, 10K in the zoo and stuff. And, and he had people coming in from New York and all, for, all over the country for the 24-hour run. You remember that? Didn't they have tents set up out they there? They had tents. Okay. Had, uh, they'd come in and sit down, and, and you could hear them at night. Oh, oh, you know, <laughs> it scared most of us off. <laughs> we were like... I think marathons from my distance, <laughs> 24 hours ago, not for me. Well, there was a guy that uh, traveled around in a hearse. Yeah. <laughs> and he slept in that hearse. Yeah. And he he would ran he ran something like uh, back then that was like 50 I, I marathons remember. a year or something. Yeah, something like that. But he had big cattle horns on the hood. <laughs> he ate sardines. He swore that sardines were his propellant. With some strange people. A lot of salt and a lot of oil and yeah. a lot of, I guess, protein. A lot of protein. <laughs> so we, we wanted to all off base. We just thought he was off base. I, I wrote a book, I don't know if you've seen it or not, called Ultra Running History of Memphis. Uh -huh. 
Uh-huh. You can see, you'll see yeah. it at Breakaway. It's for sale, four bucks, and then okay. Thief Thief's got them at four bucks. It's pretty slim, 20 pages, but I, I went back to the 70s and picked up all that about Vinoy and the 24-hour run because people didn't realize that the ultra scene in Memphis goes back to the early 70s uh, with that sort of thing going on. And Vinoy, I know we're getting off base here, and wow. Well, one thing, what about, what about Hash House Harriers? Yeah. What, what is that? What was that? It's still going on. It's, yeah, it's um, still going on. Uh, it, it's an international running community. It started in the 30s. British troops over in Malaysia were bored to tears before the Second World War, uh -huh. and they were used to doing hare and hound runs, uh -huh. where one guy would be designated the hound, and he'd go out, and, and the hares would try to catch him. Uh, or the hounds would try the way catch around. Thank you. Thank you. It would have been a very slow race. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's over. I see. Let's go drink beer. Yeah. And so the hare and hounds run, and and they drank beer at the hash house, which was where they ate for the barracks. Uh -huh. And uh, after the war was over, two of them lived. The other four or five guys had died in the war, and they started it up, and it, it grew by military bases. And now I think there are a thousand chapters in almost every country in the world that you can travel. And if you know anything about the hash house, you can call them up and, or look on the map, see where they are, and call them and say, hey, you got a hash? And they're all off-road. Most of them are off-road. I've run some that were on roads. I ran one on an, on an island in the Caribbean that was, uh, they ran the same circle every time I went. <laughs> what's the point? <laughs> what's the point? What's the point here? You know, <laughs> drink beer. I went, well, okay, well I see that now. It's called a uh, drinking club with a running problem. Yeah, that's what it really is. Yeah. The, the ones I went to, <laughs> I didn't need any excuse then, but it was a yeah. easy way you could drink beer before, during, and after. And after, and they have a a, a ceremony okay. at the end of it that's real British. They sing pretty nasty songs, yeah. and adult flavored. And, but it, there's still the thousandth one was held last year in Memphis, the thousandth Memphis hash house area. You get a, a usually a vulgar uh, nickname. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm okay. Barnacle Bill. Mine was one of the better ones. Yeah, that's mine. One, what was it? Uh, Can you say it? Yeah, it wasn't that bad. I'm trying to think of what it. Was. <laughs> sewer sucker. Oh, sewer sucker. Okay, yeah. that's not bad. Yeah. I've, I've, I was the GM here in town for 12 years. That was the Grand Snake. Really? To call myself. Yeah, really grand <laughs> Snake. <laughs> when I was the gr Grand Master, they called it. Yeah. I, 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 now, what was yours? What was your Barnacle Bill? Barnacle Bill. Okay. I was I was sailing. That's good. Yeah. I used to race sailboats, <laughs> so I would race sailboats early in the on Saturdays and Sundays, and then come back and run 10, 12 miles. <laughs> so quite a life I had there for a while. Well, that's Maybe. a wor that's a workout. Yeah, really there. workout. Man. Yeah, that's pretty neat. But like uh, unfortunately, yeah. Uh, priorities came along. Anyway, gentlemen, it's about yeah. 4.30. Sure. So you've been here mm -hmm. okay. a while. Uh, and this will be serialized. <laughs> we'll, we'll put this in little installments so y'all can we'll make uh, the viewers pay for it. But I appreciate y'all coming. You guys are, are the icons in Memphis for me and my, my generation of runners. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Mike Bill. Cody and all of us uh, and the guys at Breakaway and Fleet Feet, too. Uh, we talked fondly, uh, fondly of y'all's times and how hard y'all worked and what all that meant to Memphis running. Without you guys, I think running would have uh, been a lot slower to evolve in town. But maybe we can do this again before we all hang up our hats here. Uh, and the reason we did is because we were losing people. Freeman Marr passed mm -hmm. away. Jim Mathis, who I, those guys I would have loved to have interviewed on, on this tape and had it available for people to meet these, those guys. But anyway, that's it for us. <laughs>